Hello guys, and I thought I would do this video for people who uh, have really never done any 3D work before. Um, I was assuming in some of my previous tutorials that you guys maybe had some knowledge of um, other 3D softwares, like maybe uh, you've used Maya, or you've used SketchUp, or you've used SolidWorks, or something. You already had some knowledge. Um, this video is really going to be for the people who are really new and um, Fusion 360 maybe is your first experience with any kind of CAD design software or 3D software. So um, when you start up Fusion 360, you're going to be presented with something like this. So this is uh, kind of your staging area, if you like. We've got an origin point in the middle there. We've got the red and blue lines which uh, intersect that origin. So this, uh, if you think of a graph, if you look at it like this, this will kind of be your X and Y axis, but then we have a third axis in 3D, which is the vertical one, which is the Z axis. So if we put our origin on, you'll see them here. We've got the X, Y, and Z. So those are our axis, and then we have faces or planes, which is our top plane and our side and front planes. These are what we're going to use um, as, as kind of a reference for our model when we start sketching and drawing and extruding. And don't worry if you don't know what extrusion and sketches and drawings really are. We're going to be covering that in other tutorials. So with navigation, we can orbit around this space uh, by going in free orbit or constrained orbit. So constrained orbit means that we are going to constrain ourselves to one of the axis only. Um, if we move outside here, you see, um, there, we can now only rotate in this one axis. Okay? Um, that's basically what constrained orbit is. We can only rotate around that particular axis. So if I go up or down, see nothing happens. However, if I'm inside of here, I'm going to get free orbit, which basically means I can rotate around in any direction I want. Now, as a uh, reference to help you navigate, we have this. So our home view will be here. And from there, we can go to a top view. We can then rotate around these views to different sides or different faces. And we can rotate them also in other directions. So as well as being able to actually rotate them around manually, you can also skip to specific views like so. And you can also see there we have our X, Y, and Z axis. Um, so the Y axis mm -hmm. going up, and the X and the Z axis going in these two other directions there. So red is X, blue is Z, and green is our Y. So if we look at this straight on from the front, as I said, like a graph, you have your X and you have your Y. And shooting out towards you is the third axis Z. So this is why it is called three dimensions. Two dimensions would only be the X and the Y. This will be a two dimensional drawing. And we are going to do a lot of two dimensional work. In this software, we uh, tend to start a lot of things from sketches in two dimensions and we extrude them out um, and, and turn them into 3D shapes. So that is our staging area, our origin point, how we rotate around it. You'll notice when we rotate, we're rotating around that center point and um, how we can look at specific faces using this tool over there and return to our home position anytime that we want by pressing on there. Now, we can um, show this grid or not. Down here, it's up to you. You can hide the layout grid or you can show it. We can also snap to the grid. So um, when we start doing drawings, it'll snap to there. And we can change grid settings, uh, adaptive or fixed. So we can set a, a specific uh, grid spacing if we want. Um, this is all kind of more advanced stuff. I would just leave it as its um, basics for now. We also have different display settings, um, which we'll cover in other videos. We can change our camera from orthographic to perspective. So a perspective camera when we have a front view, you're going to be viewing objects in perspective. So 
Um, you, if you're familiar with technical drawing, you'll know the difference between perspective and orthographic. So if it's orthographic view, we are not going to have a vanishing point. So as objects get further away from you in a perspective view, um, the points are going to converge and it's going to give you the, uh, the, um, the illusion of depth. Whereas if we have an orthographic view, they will always remain parallel and the same distance apart. So that allows us in technical drawings to get um, a measurements um, that are not being distorted by a perspective view. So I uh, tend to model um, in a um, orthographic view myself. That's my own personal preference. Um, now we also have a pan tool here. So pan allows us to move around in an X, Y, or Z um, direction. And the zoom tool, of course, allows us to zoom in and out of different parts. So that is our navigation. And then down here, we also have this timeline. At the moment, we can't drag the timeline anywhere because we have done nothing. We haven't created any objects, we haven't done any sketching. But as we begin to work, the timeline will appear here. So uh, rather like you have undo commands, this is basically all your levels of undo. So it will show you every step that you have made in modeling your object. And you can fast forward and reverse through that timeline. You can also press play and it will play everything that you've done, every step that you've done. You can see your model being built. Um, so this actually is a very powerful and useful feature. You'll see how we can use it um, later on. So up here we have our different modes. We have a design workspace, we have a rendering workspace, we have animation, simulation, manufacturing, and drawing. Uh, we're going to spend most of our time in the design, and it tells you there when you mouse over what each of these functions does. So the design workspace is for creating mechanical designs that are mostly prismatic geometry and access commands to create solid bodies. So uh, we can create bodies and components. There is a difference between them, um, which we'll go into in other tutorials. But we can basically begin to create objects or bodies from here. And we can then modify them from this menu. We have different modifications we can do. And then we can assemble those components or bodies into a, um, a finished product um, and joint them so that we can set this piece, how it moves in relation to another piece. So... Um, now we've basically covered the introduction to what a 3D workspace is, how we can navigate around it. Let's go ahead and actually create a three-dimensional object. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. If we want to create a box, we can just go straight to creating a solid box here. That's kind of a shortcut. Um, I'm going to show you the long way of doing it, just so I can cover more features here. So we'll go to create a sketch. And now we have different um, planes that we can draw on, okay? So we can choose to draw on um, um, the front plane or the uh, right plane or the top plane, okay? I will select the top plane here and then we will go to look at. So when we select our plane, it kind of starts our sketch. You'll see that up here now, we have some different options and we're going to go to look at that will now align our view we'll look at the plane that we have chosen to draw on which is our top down view now we will create a two point rectangle we have different options for creating the rectangle we can create a three point rectangle a two point rectangle or a center rectangle now, I'm going to create a center rectangle. That means that we can start on our center point or our origin point here in our drawing. And as we drag this out, our rectangle is going to grow around that center point, rather like uh, if you're creating a circle and you would drag it out from the center. That's what we're doing here, but with a uh, rectangle shape. Now, you'll see that we have um, 
sizes there. Fusion 360 is primarily meant for drawing and designing objects um, in real life sizes. Okay, um, so rather like a CAD software, if you ever use AutoCAD, you can input actual sizes. And this begins to also do something called constrain our model. So as we edit sizes, uh, things that are connected together, they will automatically adjust. Um, so our units are currently set to millimeters. So if we type in 50 and we tab and we go 50, now you'll see that we get this little lock appearing. So that means that our sizes are constrained. So now when I move my mouse around, nothing changes. However, I could change that to 30 and I could tab and I can change this to 30. Now we have a 30 by 30 millimeter square or I can tab again and I can change it back to 50. Now what this is doing is constraining our model so that I can't uh, change things accidentally or um, they, they are constrained by these parameters, otherwise called parametric modeling. So if we now hit enter, it would finish this sketch, okay? Uh, so that finishes the drawing of our rectangle, but it doesn't actually close off the sketch. I'm still in sketch mode, okay? I haven't actually clicked finish sketch yet. But you'll see here, I now have these dimensions and uh, this is fully constrained. Now, if I create a circle and we'll go for a center diameter circle and we go to the same origin point. So that means that our circle is now going to be perfectly centered inside of our um, cube here. Now, I can just drag this out and you'll see we've got no we've got no lock next to our dimensions and as I move this around nothing um, is locking okay it's just snapping to these surfaces or these edges but my dimension is not constrained now we made a 50 by 50 square if I want to make a hole in the middle of this cube which is 30 millimeters across then I could just click here at 30 or I could actually type in 30 and now we get our little lock and this has been constrained okay so I'll show you that again click in the center and I also want to constrain it to this axis here and we'll type in 30 and enter now we have our constrained circle diameter now if I go to finish sketch, we can see that we have almost a, uh, well, we have a 2D drawing on what looks like almost a, a piece of paper here, okay? Now we want to rise this out in the third dimension. That would be our Y because we drew this on the X and Z, okay? Our top view, X and Z. So we need to add to it the third dimension, which is Y. And to do that, we are going to use our extrusion tool. So we select extrude here and we click on this. Now, you'll notice that I can pull this out and I have a square with a hole in the middle. If we choose extrude and I select this and this profile and I pull it out, now I get a cube with no hole in the middle. Okay, so we will extrude with a hole in the middle. We'll pull this out. Now again, I can pull that out to any um, distance that I want or I can type in a specific distance. So I want to extrude this out by 30 and I hit enter. So now we've drawn our sketch and we've extruded out and we now have a 3D view that we can look at. So congratulations if this is your first time using 3D software you created your first 3D constrained object and it is all centered nicely around our origin point. Now I mentioned earlier the timeline. 
we can actually jump back, a bit like doing an undo. But you'll see we don't see our sketch there. That's because after we have done a sketch, you'll see here, it is now hidden because we used that sketch. We drew it, we extruded it, and now the software assumes that we're done with that sketch. But we can always bring it back by unhiding it. You'll see this sketch is locked. That means it is constrained. However, we can go into this sketch and we can click edit. Now, this is an interesting thing. We've got a circle here that was 30. Let's say we want to change our mind. We don't want that to be 30 anymore. We want this to be 10. Changes our circle size. Finish sketch. Now I'll skip forward in our timeline and look what we have here. Now because we created a constrained circle, we can click on its dimension, we can change the dimension, and everything afterwards in our timeline related to that sketch and that circle is automatically changed. So we don't need to do our extrusion again or undo anything, okay? We don't even have to actually step back in our timeline. We can just right click on that. We can go to edit sketch. We can click on that dimension. We can change it. Now let's change it to 25. Hit enter. Finish our sketch and we can see straight away instantly the result of that. So that's why it's important to um, dimension and constrain your sketches. Because if you didn't, and we went back and we wanted to change that, we would have to maybe delete that circle, draw it again, and it can then cause downstream errors. And it also just takes longer, it's an extra step. It's much quicker to just be able to jump back to that sketch, edit the sketch, change the dimension. So let's say we also want to make our cube a different dimension. We want to make this 40 and we want to make this 40 also. And we'll make our circle 10. There we go. Finish sketch. Straight away, the changes are all reflected here. And when we're done with this sketch, we can always hide it again. And voila, there we have our first parametric modeled object. So I hope that you found this tutorial useful. This is a, a real basic introduction to Fusion 360. Um, we're going to be covering lots more features. This is a very powerful software. There's tons of features and functions and all sorts of complexities to this software, particularly if you're going to be going down the route of um, doing mechanical modeling. Um, there's tons of features here. If you're going to be using it for 3D uh, modeling that you're going to then want to print, we'll also be covering how to do that. So uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with all of our latest videos. Feel free to look through our video tutorial series. Um, I've just been working on one recently which shows you how to make a ball valve. Uh, that will cover lots of basic functions of Fusion 360. I won't just be creating this random object, we're gonna actually be making a finished product. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time at uh, Fusion 360 Tutorials.